Hello viewers, I, Supratip Sharma, a student from 3rd professional year, BVSC and AH, welcome you to the channel. In this video, I'm going to present about the topic, Understanding of Antitubercular, Antifungal and Unhelmetic Drugs in Veterinary Undergraduate Curriculum. So, here are the contents. In antitubercular drugs, we are going to see its classification and different drugs under first and second line antitubercular drugs. Next, we will see classification and various important drugs under antifungals. Then in enthalmentics, at first, general mode of action, then properties of an ideal enthalmentic, next classification, and then various important antinematodal, antisystodal, and antitrematodal drugs. Antitubercular drugs. Before going into the drugs, let's know about the disease. TB is a chronic granulomatous disease and a major health concern for the human and animal sport. The main re region or causative organism behind the disease is Mycobacterium bovis in case of domestic animals. Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium avium complex are some other types of Mycobacterium that can also cause disease in animals. Antitubercular drugs are the antimicrobials that are used to treat TB cases after proper diagnosis. So here is the classification of antitubercular drugs. It is classified into first line and second line. The first line antitubercular drugs are with high efficacy and low toxicity. They can be used routinely to treat the TB cases. The second line anti-TB drugs are with low efficacy or high toxicity or both. They are used as reserve drugs. They are also used with first line anti-TB drugs to treat against drug resistant TB. The examples of first line anti-TB drugs are isoniazide, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, streptomycin. And in second line anti-TB drugs, the examples are ethionamide, cycloserine, paraminocellicyclic acid, thiacetazone, tenamycin, capromycin, etc. Tenamycin, capromycin are injectable forms of drugs. Nylons, newer microlids, and some rifampin congeners are recent additions to the antimicrobacterial drugs. Now, first line antitubercular drugs. Here the first drug is isoniazide. It is a hydroxide of isonicotinic acid. It is an excellent antitubercular agent. It has both bactericidal and bacteriostatic activity. Primarily, it is tuberculosidal. Fast multiplying organisms are killed, but quiescent ones are only inhibited. However, most non tubercular mycobacteria are not inhibited by isoniazide. The mechanism of action for isoniazide is it inhibits the synthesis of mycolic acid, which are unique fatty acid component of mycobacterial cell wall. The drug is completely absorbed when given orally and penetrates all body tissue, tubercular cavities, placenta, and meninges. It is extensively, extensively metabolized in the liver and excreted in urine as acetyl isoniazide. If the drug is given alone, after 2 3 months, an apparent resistance emerges. It is due to failure of the drug being taken by the organism. The dose for the drug in case of animals is 4 to 6 mg per kg body weight and may be increased up to 10 to 12 mg per kg body weight. The adverse effects of the drug include dose dependent toxic effects like peripheral neuritis and various neurological manifestations that include paresthesis, numbness, mental disturbances like symptoms. Next is rifampin. Rifampin is a semi-synthetic derivative of rifamycin obtained from streptomyces mediterranean. It has bactericidal action against mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium paratuberculosis and other subpopulation of tuberculosis bacilli. Both extra and intracellular organisms are affected. The mechanism of action behind this rifampin is it inhibits bacterial DNA dependent RNA synthesis. It is well absorbed orally, penetrates cavities, gaseous masses, placenta, meninges, etc. It is metabolized in liver, mainly excreted in bite and urine. Resistance occurs rapidly against this drug due to mutation. The dose is 10 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effects include hepatitis as a major effect, hemolysis, respiratory syndrome, renal failure are some rare in manifestations. Next, pyrazinamide. It is chemically similar to isoniazide. 
is highly active against intracellularly located bacilli and it acts best in acidic medium at pH 5 to 5.5. The mechanism of action resembles to isoniazide. It inhibits mycolic acid synthesis by interacting with fatty acid synthesis. Pharmacokinetics include the drug is absorbed orally and widely distributed in the body. It penetrates CSF also. It is metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. Resistance develops rapidly when used alone due to mutation. The dose is 25 to 30 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effects include hepatotoxicity when given in higher dose. Itambutal. It is a drug with selective tuberculosis activity active against MSC that is Mycobacterium avium complex and some other Mycobacteria. It hastens the rate of sputum conversion and low resistance when used with isoniazide or pyrazinamide. The mechanism of action is not fully understood. The ethan bottle is found to inhibit arabinogalactan synthesis and interfere with mycoloic acid incorporation in mycobacterial cell wall. About third fourth of an oral dose is absorbed, distributed wi widely, penetrates meninges incompletely and stored in RBCs for temporary time. It is excreted through urine and its plasma half-life is about 4 hours. Resistance is due to alteration in the drug target gene and it develops slowly. The dose is 15 to 20 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effects include loss, loss of visual equity or color vision due to optic neuritis. Streptomycin. It was first clinically used anti-tubercular drug obtained from Streptomyces gracilis. It is tuberculocidal but less effective than isoniazide and rifampin. It acts only on extracellular bacilli due to poor penetration into cells. The mechanism of in action includes inhibition of bacterial protein synthesis by binding with 30S subunit of bacterial ribosome. Absorption from sites in muscle is rapid. It is distributed only extracellularly, neither absorbed nor destroyed in gastrointestinal tract. It is not metabolized and excreted unchanged in the urine. The resistance develops rapidly when used alone. Dose 15 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effects include vestibular and auditory disturbances and nephrotoxicity in some cases. Now comes to the second line antitubercular drugs. Second line antitubercular drugs include salicylic acid. It is a tubercular static drug chemically related to sulfonamides and active on only tubercular bacillus. The mechanism of action includes inhibition of folic acid synthesis and subsequent metabolites resulting in tuberculosis effect. It is absorbed completely by oral route and distributed all over except in CSF, excreted rapidly by glomerular filtration and tubular secretion. The resistance to pass develops slowly. The dose is 200 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effect includes GI irritation, hypersensitization, hematological defects, and liver dysfunction. Next is thiazotazole. It is an orally used drug along with isoniazide as substitute for paraminosalicylic acid. But its efficacy in TB is now once considered as uncertain. The mechanism behind is tuberculosis with low efficacy involves with inhibition of mycolic acid. It is an orally active drug primarily excreted unchanged in urine. Half-life is of 12 hours. Dose is 2.5 mg per kg body weight. Adverse effects includes hepatitis, exfoliative dermatitis, and rarely bone marrow depression. Next is cycloserine. Cycloserine is a broad spectrum antibiotic obtained from Streptomyces orchidaceus. It is analog of DL9 and tuberculosis in nature. It inhibits bacterial cell wall synthesis. It is well absorbed orally, diffuses all over the body, including CSF. CSF concentration is equal to that of plasma. About one third is metabolized and rest is excreted unchanged in urine. The resistance develops against this drug slowly. Adverse effects include CNS toxicity with signs like sleepiness, headache, tremor, etc. Ethionamide. It is a tuberculosis drug with moderate efficacy. It acts on host extra and intercellular bacilli. Chemically, it is similar to isoniazide but contains sulfur. So the mechanism of action is also similar to isoniazide. It interferes with mycolic acid synthesis. Well absorbed orally, distributed all over the body including CSF, 
and it is metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. The resistance results mostly due to mutation. GI disturbances, posterior hypotension, convulsion, and hepatotoxicity are some of the adverse effects. So now, antifungal drugs. Antifungal agents are the drugs that are used to treat superficial and systemic mycosis. Fungi usually cause external disease in men and animals, times as mycosis. The most common fungal infection in men and animals is ringworm or dermatomycosis. Candidiasis is another kind of superficial mycosis. Some of the serious systemic fungal disease in animals or birds include Bruder's pneumonia in chickens, mycotic aversion in cattle, etc. So here is a list of different fungal causative agents of and the disease susceptible species. The next is classification of antifungal agents. Fungal agents may be of fungicidal or fungicidic nature. If it inhibits the growth of the fungi, then it is fungicidic, and if it can kill the fungi completely, then it is fungicidal. Based on the mode of application, they are classified as topical antifungal agents and systemic antifungal agents. The topical antifungal agents are applied topically into the infection and systemic works by oral route or other routes. Benzoic acid, natamycin, nestatin, dichlorophen are some topical antifungal agents, while amphotericin, griseofalvin, fluconazole, flucytosin are systemic antifungal agents. Another classification of antifungal agents divides the drugs into antibiotics, which includes polyins, echinocandines, heterocyclic, benzofuran, and the examples are given in the list. It also divides the drugs into azoles, antimetabolites, alal alalamine, atotropical, atotropical agents. So we will see some important antifungal drugs here. The first is empotericin. Empotericin is a polyene macrolide that is fungicidal against most organisms causing systemic mycosis. It binds to agar sterile of fungal cell membrane to form pores resulting in leaking of the cell contents and finally death of the fungi. After IV administration, it slowly, slowly distributes to most tissues except the CNS, eye and bone. Approximately 65% is excreted unchanged in urine and feces. Hemotericin is generally administered in IV route with 5% dextrose. It can be used topically and oral administration can be used in GI tract infections. Adverse effect includes renal toxicity a serious side effect. It can also produce renal vasoconstriction, decreased glomerular filtration rate, damage to tubular epithelium, etc. Next is nystatin and natamycin. They are mostly used topically. They are polyene and antibiotics derived from streptomyces species. They act by binding to ergosterol of the protoplast membrane of fungi to alter permeability and allow leakage of the cell contents, and that leads to death of the fungi. The therapeutic uses of natamycin and nystatin. Natamycin is effective against the dermatophytes, bovine itch, yeast mastitis, and mycotic keratitis. Nystatin is effective against equine metritis, canine otitis, bovine mastitis, and avian crop mycosis. It is not absorbed orally and excreted in the feces. Adverse effects include occasional gastrointestinal upset with high doses. Griseofalvin is an another kind of antibiotic that is cyclohexin benzofuran in chemical nature. It is a narrow spectrum fungicidic agent derived from penicillium griseofalvum. It binds to microtubules to inhibit spindle formation and mitosis of fungi. It is used in dogs, cats, and horses for multifocal dermatophyte infections. It is given orally distributes to keratinized tissues and metabolized by liver and excreted in urine. Occasional GI upset, headache, photosensitivity may occur as adverse effects. Prucytosin. It is a synthetic antifungal agent which is anti-metabolite in nature. Prucytosin is converted to 5-fluorouracil in fungal cells. This 5-fluorouracil is an anti-metabolite which inhibits thymidylate synthetic responsible for DNA synthesis in fungi. It is combined with amphotericin for synergistic effect in the treatment of meningeal cryptococcus. 
it is well absorbed orally, widely distributed and excreted unseen in urine. The toxicity of this drug is very low, mild gastrointestinal disturbances may occur. Now comes azoles. Systemic azoles include fluconazole, ketoconazole, myconazole and itraconazole. They are very important drugs from azoles. They are broad spectrum fungesthetic azoles. The me general mechanism of action of azoles are they inhibit eanosine 14 alpha d methylase which is fungal cytochrome P4, P450 enzyme. This results in inhibition of ergosterol synthesis, the main sterol in the fungal cell membrane. As a result, fungal replic replication is inhibited. So here are some drugs included in azoles. They are pharmacokinetics and adverse effects. Ketoconazole. It is the first azole to be used orally to treat systemic fungal infections. But relapse and toxicity is common with this drug. It is effective orally. Acidic environment is best for its absorption. H2 blocker, rifampicin, and acids reduces the bioavailability of ketoconazole. It is metabolized in liver and excreted mainly in feces. Adverse effects include liver toxicity, GI disturbances, and pruritus. Fluconazole is a triazole, which is drug of choice in most types of fungal meningitis. It is well absorbed from GIT, distributed widely in CSF also, and mainly excreted and since it urine. Mild effects include nausea, headache, and abdominal pain, etc. Itraconazole is a broad spectrum synthetic triazole. When given orally, absorption is variable and it is metabolized in liver. To overcome the extensive hepatic metabolism, it is given by IV root encapsulated with P cyclodextrin. Adverse effect includes GI disturbances, headache, dizziness, hepatitis, hypokalemia, etc. Myconazole. It is a topical agent can be given orally for GIT infections. Metabolized in liver and reaches therapeutic concentration in bone, joints, and lungs, but not in CRS. GI disturbances, pruritus, blood dyscrasias, and hyponatremia are some adverse effects. Clotrimazole is another azole that interferes with amino acid transport into the fung fungus by an action on cell membrane and active against wide range of fungi. Clotrimazole, Econazole, Ticonazole, and Suconazole are azoles used only for topical application. Now, Terbinafine. It is an allylamine compound. It is fungicidal nature in nature, active against a wide range of skin pathogens. It inhibits squalene 2,3 epoxidase and blocks ergosterol synthesis. Available for both topical and oral administration, it is well absorbed after given orally and concentrated in on skin, nails, and adipose tissue. It is metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. It may cause nausea, diarrhea, and dyspepsia as adverse effects. Now, echinopantins. These are a new class of potent semi-synthetic antifungal antibiotics with a complex cyclic lipopeptide structure. They inhibit synthesis of 1,3-beta-glucan that is necessary for fungal cell wall. Capsofungin, mycofungin, amorolfine are some examples of echinopantins. Capsofungin is effective in the treatment of candidiasis and forms of invasive aspergillosis that are refractory to the amphoterism. Oral absorption is poor and extensively protein bound. Mecafungin is under clinical trials now and it is effective against aspergillus and candida species. Amorphine is effective against fungal infections of the nails. It is given orally and it inhibits fungal sterile synthesis. Some other topical, topical agents used in fungal infections are Whitfield's ointment, undesilinic acid, dichlorophen, copper sulfate, crystal violet. Whitfield's ointment is a combination of benzoic acid and salicylic acid. It is used in ringworm infection in cattle. Salicylic acid has keratolytic action which helps in removal of infected tissue and promotes penetration of benzoic acid which is fungistatic in nature. Antisilenic acid is fungistatic used topically, generally in combination with zinc or copper sulfate. Long exposure with high concentration may also prove as fungicidal. It is very effective against microspora. Dichlorophen is another fungicide used at a concentration of 2% either as an ointment or as an alcoholic solution against dermatomycosis. The main advantage with this is low number of dressings frequent. 
copper sulfate is strongly fungicidal and has astringent and caustic property. It was used earlier for treatment of ringworm as 5% ointment or 1-2% aqua solution. Crystal violet is another effective fungicide against microsporum and trichophyton species. It is used as 1% alcoholic solution onto the ringworm lesions. Now comes to antihelmetic drugs. Antihelmetics are drugs that reduces worm load of gastrointestinal tract either by killing or inhibiting their growth. Vermicides and vermifuges. So the vermicides are the drugs that kills the worms and vermifuges are the drugs which temporarily paralyzes the helminths and removes the worms from ZID with purgatives. What is the need of ultimate? Parasitic infestations create huge problems in both animals and its owners. It makes the animal weak, debilitated, anemic, and very less productive, which is economically, economically not viable. It interferes with growth of young ones. It makes animal rough, animal with rough hair and texture, and very unhealthy looking. So the general mode of actions of antihelmetics. The first is neuromuscular blockers. Some piperazine like drugs act in similar fashion as the curare and causes paralysis of the worms, especially ascaris. The paralysis of the worms is due to hyperpolarization of the muscle membranes. The next is cholinomimetic action. Levamisol, methyridine, morantel, pyrantel, etc. Drugs causes functional groups like acetylcholine and they bind to acetylcholine receptors and causes paralysis by continuous stimulatory effect. Next is inhibitors of glucose transport. These, in, these drugs like dithiazanine inhibits glucose uptake by reducing glycogen content and causes death of the worms. Next, disrupt, disruptors of glycogen metabolism. Cystosomicidal drugs like niridazole reduces phosphorylase phosphatase activity and increases the breakdown of glycogen reserve in worms. The death of worms is due to starvation. Inhibitors of glycolysis. Arsenicals, thiacetaracemide, antimonials like potassium antimony tartarate, stevofen, etc. are some organic trivalent heavy metals and they bind with sulfide drill group. Sulfide drill group, they change the structure of proteins and active site of the enzymes. Next, inhibitors of mitochondrial reactions. Benzimidazoles and thiophenate work in this way. For muscle contra contraction, it involves high energy or ATP is required, which is provided after reduction of fumarate to succinate in mitochondria. The above drugs exert their action by inhibiting fumarate reductase, which is required for conversion of fumarate to succinate. Next, uncouplers of electron transport. They interfere with electron transport system and, and the phosphorylation process, which decreases the generation of ATP and by lack of ATP, the worms die. Niclosamide, rafoxanide are some examples of uncouplers of electron transport. Next, the properties of ideal enthalmetic. The first property is effective in removing worms. An ideal enthalmetic should have high level of enthalmetic activity. Efficacy is said to be good if it removes 95% of GI nematodes and if it removes only 70% or less than 70% then it is a poor enthalmetic and it should have effect on both adult and larval stages of the worms. Next, white therapeutic index. The enthalmetic compound should possess white therapeutic index so that minor variation in calculation of doses should not produce any toxicity in host. Next is easy to administer. The enthalmetics should be easy to administer orally in empty stomach or some needs meal before giving the enthalmetic. Next is no residue problems. If the residues after give, giving of the enthalmetics remains in the body, then it may pass on to its the animals, host animals products, and it can so effect in human and other consumers. The ideal enthalmetic should be economically justifiable so that the owner can use the enthalmetic in large number of animals with very low cost. Next, the classification of enthalmetics. They are broadly classified into anti nematodals, anti cystodal, anti trematodal. The anti nematodals act on nematodes or roundworms, anti cystodals act on the tapworms, and anti trematodals act on the flatworms or flukes. Next, the classification of anti nematodal drugs. They are 
classified into simple heterocyclic compounds includes phenothiazine, piperazine, etc. Next is benzimidazole that includes thiabendazole, mebendazole, fenbendazole, etc. Next is imidazothiazole group that includes levamisole, butamisole hydrochloride, tetramisole hydrochloride, etc. Next is tetrahydropyrimides includes pyranthyl and moranthyl. Next is organophosphorus compounds includes dichlorophos and halogen, etc. Next is miscellaneous nematocidal drugs that includes disophenol, avermectin, etc. The first drug is phenothiazin. The enthalmatic spectrum of this drug includes wide range of activity against ruminant GI nematodes like Haemonchus, esophagus tamam, etc. It also acts on strongylus and equine ascarids in case of equines. It is an old drug which was marketed as powder containing 95% pure phenothiazine. The chem it is chemically thiodiphenylamine and the chemical structure is given here. It is pale green yellow powder stable in dry condition. The exact mechanism of action of phenothiazine is not known. Resistance for resistant worms also absorb the same quantity of phenothiazine as susceptible one and they do not show any sign of toxicity. So it is believed that enzymatic system differences in the worms are related to enthalmatic action. Phenothiazin is converted to phenothiazin sul sulfoxide by the cellular enzymes of intestinal epithelium and then it is absorbed. Liver oxidizes it into two metabolites, leukophenothiazin and leukothiazin. Both the metabolites are excreted in urine. After excretion, when it comes into contact with air, it takes red or brown color. This coloration may be misunderstood as hematuria by the owners. Next is toxicity. Horses are more susceptible to toxic symptoms of phenothiazine. The symptoms are anemia, weakness, anorexia, fever, colic, etc. Debilitated and anemic cattle are more susceptible to poisoning. Side effects of phenothiazine include photosensitization in calves, sheep, goat, and fowl. The toxicity can be treated treated by transfusion of blood and saline cathartics. The administration of the drug is by oral routes and the dose are in single dose treatment. Sheep and goat are given 25 to 30 gram for over 27 kg. Cattle are given 10 gram per 45 kg body weight. Horse are given 3 gram per kg body weight. Chicken are given 0.5 gram per bird and turkey 1 gram per bird. Next is piperazine. Piperazine is a drug of choice for ascarid and nodular worm infection in all species of domestic animals. It is moderately effective in pinworm infections. However, it doesn't have any effect for other parasites of GI tract. It is a simple ring structure chemically. It is diethyldiamide. It is insoluble, insoluble in ether but soluble in water and glycerol. It is unstable, so it is mainly found in Many salts form there piperazine adipate, piperazine sulfate, piperazine citrate, piperazine tartarate, piperazine phosphate, piperazine hydrochloride. Mechanism of action The piperazine is a GABA receptor again agonist that hyperpolarizes nematode muscle, causing flaccid paralysis of the worms. Administration by tablet form in case of dogs and cats which consists 45 to 65 milligram per kg body weight. Poultry are given powder or suspension form of drugs at the rate 32 milligram per kg body weight. Other animals are given in brand masses, masses 110 milligram kg for horses. Toxicity Large doses may produce vomiting, diarrhea, and ataxia. The animal suffering from hepatic and renal disorder should not be treated. Next is benzimidazole group. It includes thiabendazole as a first drug. It is a broad spectrum enthalmatic used for gastrointestinal parasites in cattle, sheep, goat, horse, and birds. It is larvicidal and also ovicidal. That means it kills the immature stages also. The mechanism of action. It inhibits fumaric reductase in helminths Inter then interferes with the fermentation process which causes reduction in energy formation and ultimately leads to death of the 
worms. The drug is rapidly absorbed by gastrointestinal tract and distributed throughout the body. It is quickly metabolized and excreted in urine and feces. This drug is effective against Chimonchus, Trichostrongylus, Panostomum, Chabartia, Osophagostomum, and Strongyloids. The dose for the drug is 50 to 110 mg per kg. In case of horses, it, it eliminates 90% of mature auxiliaries, Strongylus, and Triton perforus. The same dose is for ruminants also. The treatment is repeated after 14 to 21 days. For poultry, it is used against gap worms. The dose is 0.1% for 2 weeks in drinking water. Hyperbenzal usually is a very safe drug, but pregnant use can tolerate high dose and it can reduce glycogen level, RNA, ascorbic acid in case of piglets. Next is Mebendazole. Mebendazole is a yellowish powder that is broad spectrum enthalmetic, mainly acts in equine against Ascaris, Strongyloids, Trichonema, Auxiliaries, etc. And in case of poultry, it acts against Syngema strecky. It inhibits irreversibly the uptake of glucose and worms die due to starvation. The pharmacokinetics of the drug it is poorly absorbed from GIT and excreted unchanged in feces. It is a safer drug but should not be used in pregnancy. Dose for horse, dog, and cat is 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight. Elvendazole and Fenvendazole are some another drugs from benzimidazole, benzimidazole group. Elvendazole is a broad spectrum enthalmetic. It is better absorbed from GIT and should not be given to pregnant animals. Fenbendazole is effective against roundworms of cattle, sheep, goat, horse, and pigs. Also it eliminates lungworms and tapeworms and kills all stages of worms, given at 5 mg per kg body weight. Next is Putamisol hydrochloride. Putamisol hydrochloride is an injectable enthalmetic used in dogs for the treatment of whipworm and hookworms that are ankylostoma caninum infestation. The dose for the drug is 2 to 4 mg per kg subcutaneously given at single dose. IM ingestion is not advisable since it causes pain. Vomiting, ataxia, tremor, lateral recumbency, and convulsions are some toxicity symptoms. The drug should not be given to debilitated and severely diseased animals. It should also not be administered to heartworm positive dogs, dogs with renal and liver disorders, and it should not be used within 24 hours with the cystocidal drug Punamidin. Next is Pyrantel and Morantel. Pyrantel is a broad spectrum enthalmetic against gastrointestinal parasites of cattle, horse, dogs, and pigs. It is imidazothiazole derivative, off white in color, and available in three salts to use in animals. They are tartaric, pamoet, and imbonet. Pyrantel tartarate is readily absorbed from GIT of pigs and dogs and less in ruminant. It is rapidly metabolized and 40% of dose is excreted in dog. The unsaged drug is excreted in feces, especially in ruminants. The palmoid salt is slowly absorbed from GIT, thus the slow absorption is advantageous to act against parasites of large intestine. Therefore, it is useful in dogs and horses. The action of pyrantel is similar to action of acetylcholine and it produces paralytic action in parasites. Morantel It is the methyl ester analog of pyrantel. Morantel is more effective and safer enthalmetic in case of ruminants. It is rapidly absorbed from the abomasum and upper small intestine of sheep. It is rapidly metabolized by liver and excreted in urine as metabolites within 96 hours of dosing. Pyrantel and Morantel are primarily effective against ethyl cutworms and immature larval stages that remain in the lumen or in the mucal, mucal, mucosal surface. The dose are Pyrantel tartarate given to horse at 11 mg per kg body weight orally. Pyrantel pamoet are given to pups at 7.5 mg per kg orally at 2, 4, 6, and 8 weeks of age. Morantel is given to cattle at a rate 8.8 gram per kg body weight orally and to sheep 
10 mg per kg body weight orally. Febantel. Febantel is a broad spectrum enthalmetic used in case of horses because the pregnant mares are also safe to treat with Febantel. Dose is 6 mg per kg body weight orally. Next is tetramisole hydrochloride. The enthalmetic spectrum of tetramisole hydrochloride includes GI worms of cattle, sheep, and goats, also active against dictacolas or lungworms, and Eoloro strongylus, that is lungworms of cat. In pigs, it is used against Ascaris, Hydrostrongylus, Osophagus domum, and Metastrongylus. This drug is also effective against both mature and immature stages. Dose Cattle, sheep, goat, and pig are given 50 mg per kg body weight and cats are given 5 mg per kg body weight. Overdose in cattle and sheep may cause head shaking, salivation, and leaking of lips as adverse effects. Next is Levamisole Hydrochloride. It is a broad spectrum enthalmetic and an immunomodulator. It is also used in animals where immune system is depressed. It is rapidly absorbed and is distributed to all parts of the body. Peak blood concentration is obtained within one hour of injection. The tissue concentrations of levamisole persist for five days. It's mainly excreted through feces and urine. The low concentrations of levamisole stimulates ganglion of worms and produce muscle paralysis, while the higher concentrations have been reported to interfere with carbohydrate metabolism. The enthalmetic spectrum includes hemonchus, ostotasia, trichostrongylus, cooperia, metastrongylus, ascaris, hyostrongylus, trichuris, and dictagolus. Those sheep, cattle, and pig are given 7.5 mg per kg body weight orally. Poultry are given 18 to 36 mg per kg as subcutaneous injection, 18.2% solution, 2 ml per 50 kg body weight. Cattle treated should not be slaughtered within 48 hours of oral treatment and 7 days of parenteral treatment due to residual problem. Next, there are some miscellaneous antinematodes that includes disophenol or ensilon. Disophenol is extracted from bushu plant leaves. It is an injectable anti-hookworm compound used in dogs and cats. Apart from can canine hookworms, it is also effective against Spirosaca lupi, used to treat wild animals, especially leopards, lions, black panthers, golden cats, etc., against ankylostoma and nathostoma. The mechanism of action is unknown, and it is believed to be that the worms die after ingesting disophenol contain disophenol containing blood. It is administered as powder through oral route or given by subcutaneous or intramuscular injection. In dog, the dose is 10 mg per kg body weight subcutaneously and in case of wild felines, 6.6 mg per kg body weight. Opacity of lens, vomiting at high dose and tachycardia, polypnea can be seen in case of fatal cases. Next is Avermectin. Avermectins are produced by fermentation of Streptomyces avermetilis. They are complex of 8 components, namely A1A, A1A, A2A, B1A, B2A, A1B, A2B, B1B and B2B. Ivermectin is the combination of B1A and B1B in ratio 80% and 20% respectively. These components have enthalmetic activity. These are not antibacterial or fungicidal as the macrolid or polyene antibiotics. Ivermectins inhibit the motility and thereby causes paralysis of worms. Gamma amino butyric acid release is increased due to B1A form synaptosomes of the nervous system. Increased release of GABA causes hyperpolarization of postsynaptic cells and inhibit contraction of muscle. Thus, worms are expelled in the similar fashion as ascarids following piperazine therapy. The dose given is to cattle 0.2 mg per kg body weight subcutaneously to sheep 0.2 mg per kg body weight orally, the horse 0.2 mg per kg body weight orally or through IM injection, the swine 0.3 mg per kg body weight subcutaneously. Mydriasis in dog after 10 fold of oral dose can be seen as toxicity symptom. Acute toxicity signs 
include ataxia, CNS depression, listness, etc. Now, some other anti nematodal drugs include N butyl chloride, which is administered as gelatin capsule to the dogs effective against ascarid and hookworm infections. More than 4.5 kg dogs given 500 mg orally and for pups 125 mg bees daily orally. Hygromycin B is an antibiotic obtained from Streptomyces hygroscopias effective against Ascaridia gelli, Capillaria obsiguata and Heterichis gallinarum of poultry and Ascarid swarm esophagostemum in case of swine. The dose is 12 gram per 900 kg of feed in case of swine and 8 gram per 900 kg of feed in case of poultry. Thalophine is a whipicidal drug used in dog administered orally in tablet form or intravenously. Dogs are given 200 mg per kg body weight orally. Glycobiarsol it is used in whipworm infection in dogs given 220 mg per kg body weight daily for 5 days. Next, there are some drugs that act against heartworms infection. The first one is thiacetaracamide sodium. It consists of sodium salt of sulfur sulfur diester of p carbamolytate dithiobenzene ernas acid with mercaptoacetic acid. Its therapeutic effectiveness can be seen after 4 doses of the drug. The adult worms die within 5 to 7 days. In some cases, they take longer period of 14 days. The dead worms lodge into the blood uh, pulmonary artery after removal from the heart. The lost worms disappear after 2-3 months by the process of cellular phagocytosis. If the body temperature is rise accompanied by coughing, it may indicate a pulmonary embolism due to lodging of the worms. Dose 2.2 mg per kg body weight intravenously given, given twice daily for 2 days. Hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic toxicity with vomition and discoloration of urine may be noticed. The next drug is dithiazinine. Dithiazinine inhibits glucose absorption in worms. The worms then lose motility and get trapped in the capillary bed, and they are phagocytized by the host cells. 6.6 to 11 mg per kg on daily basis orally feed once daily for 7 days. To avoid the toxicity, 6.6 mg is the lowest dose given. Splitting the daily dose into two parts can minimize the occurrence of toxicity. It is not clear how dithiazinine exactly works. High doses of dithiazinine produce vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, and asthenia. The next drug is dithylcarbazamine citrate. It is a filary site and piperazine derivative. It is available as syrup, powder, or tablet. The combination of dithylcarbamazine with oxbendazole protects the dogs against hookworm infections also. The use of dithylcarbazamine in microfilaria positive dogs is discouraged and it is contraindicated. 6.6 mg per kg daily dose for prophylactic heartworm syndrome. Next, there are antisystodial drugs. These drugs effect against cystodes or tapeworms. Drugs that kill the tapeworms are called tenia sites and the drugs which only expels the worms by paralyzing them are called tenia fuses. In earlier ages, many natural organic compounds are, were used as antisystodels. They are like pumping, pumpkin seeds which constitutes cucurbitin as an active component against, anti, uh, against cystod worms. It is very safe drug and weak and debilitated patients, even young ones, can consume it. However, low efficacy leads to discontinuation of the pumpkin seeds as an antisystodel drug. The next is male farm. The powdered rhizome of this plant was used in early period, especially by Greek physician against cystodes. The active ingredient philicic acid is responsible for antisystodel action, which was thought to paralyze the muscle of tapeworms. The next is Kamala. It acts against cystodes of cats, especially in Dipylidium, tinea, etc. Comola is obtained from fruits of Melotas philippinensis. The habitat of this plant is Philippines, 
India, China, and Australia. It mainly acts by paralyzing the tapworms muscle, the tap, muscle. However, this is obsolete now because of low efficacy. Nicotine is a low efficacy compound usually along with copper sulfate in case of ruminants. The next is aerocholine. Aerocholine is obtained from betel nuts. Salts of aerocholines are very useful and this is the The next is aerocholine hydrobomide. It is very effective against cystoids of dogs like tinea pisiformis, tinea hydrotizena, tinea ovis, tinea multiceps, and also echinococcus granulosus. The aerocholine paralyzes worm's musculature till the worm loses its attachment to the intestinal mucosa of the host. Besides, the aerocholine hydrobomide increases the peristalsis so that detached worms are removed from GI tract. As aerocholine produces paralysis for a brief period, worms affected may recover and again make attachment with intestinal wall. If purgation due to the local action has not occurred within two hours of its treatment, in such cases, saline purgatives are recommended. The dog should be fasted 12 to 13 hours before giving aerocholine hydrobomide. It is conven convenient to administer the tablet with meat through oral route. It is easily absorbed from stomach and metabolized in liver. One milligram per kg is given as dose for dogs. Discomfort, vomiting, and unconsciousness can be seen with high doses. It is not advised to give it to cats due to excessive bronchial secretion, which may cause suffocation in case of cats. Next is aerocholine acetarsal. It is effective against tinea and dipylidium species in dogs and cats. It is not very well tolerated and vomison occur. It is contraindicated to febrile animals, gastrointestinal tract disorder, and cardiac disorders. 4.9 mg per kg is the dose for dogs and cats. Aerocholine carboxyphenyl stibonate. It is effective against tinea and dipylidium in dogs available in tablet form. Depression, nausea, vomition are some toxicity signs. It is given at 10.3 mg per kg body weight orally. Now some inorganic antisystotal compounds. The first one is tin oxide or chloride. It, these were used 40 years ago for removal of cystodes in humans. It is believed that tin coats the cuticle of their forms with the particles and renders the strobula susceptible to di digestion. Nowadays, the use of tin for removal of cystodes is obsolete due to its repeated dosing over a period of several days and its variable frequency of side effects. Next is lead. Arsenate salt of lead has been used to treat monogia infections in lambs, cubs, and kids. It is hydrolyzed in the digestive tract to lead and arsenic. The lead is transformed to lead oxide and the pentavalent arsenic to toxic trivalent arsenic, which kills the worms. The next is synthetic organic compounds. The first one is bunamidine hydrochloride. Bunamidine chiefly has three salts. They are hydrochloride, hydroxyl naphthoate, and p toluene sulfonate. So bunamidine hydrochloride is effective against all the tap forms of dogs, cats in a single dose. It is 86 to 99 percent effective against immature Echinococcus granulosus and 100 percent effective against its adult stages. It is also effective against tinea, mesocystoides corti, etc. But its efficacy against dipylidium caninum is not that much. It is also less effective against ascaris. Salts of bunamidine are tinea sites. However, it doesn't produce purgation. It disrupts the integument of the worms down to the level of fibrous basal lamina. As a result, the glucose uptake is decreased and the tap worms die. Tablets are administered orally. The drug reaches quickly at the site of tap worms, especially located in the small intestine duodenal area. Because bunamidine is irritant to the mucous membrane of the oral cavity, tablets should not be crushed or dissolved before oral administration. In addition, quick absorption results in high blood concentration that may lead to toxicity. And due to that, intravenous admi administration is not recommended. The dose is 25 mg per kg orally in tablet form to dogs and cats. Bunamidine hydroxine after it. it is effective against monasia species in case of sheep and goats. It is effective against tinea pisiformis and tinea hydratizena in case of dogs when given with food. Next is niclosamide. 
Niclosamide is a tineocidal drug which is chemically 2,5-dichlorophore nitrosalicyl anilide. The chemical structure is given in the picture. It is tasteless powder and insoluble in water. It is extensively used for the treatment of tapeworm infection in animals. Effective against Typhylidium caninum, Tinea pisciformis, Tinea hydratizana, Tinea lineaformis in dogs and cats. But it is poorly effective against Echinococcus and variable efficacy for Typhylidium, Mesocystoides forti, and Mesocystoides lineatus in dogs. It is also effective against Monesia infections and Thysanosoma that is Prince tapeworm infections in cattle, sheep, goat, and deer. It inhibits glucose absorption by tapeworm and also interferes with the electron transport, transport system resulting in death of the worms. It is poorly absorbed from GI tract. The small quantity absorbed is metabolized to an inactive compound known as aminoniclosamide. Tablets of niclosamides are administered orally in dogs and cats and as a trans in case of cattle, sheep, and goats. Cattle are given 50 mg per kg orally. Dogs and cats are given 57 to 100 mg per kg orally. Sheep, goat, and chicken are given 100 mg per kg orally. The drug is very safe. It may cause liver and kidney damage with very high dose. Dichlorophen. Apart from tineocidal property, it also possesses bactericidal and fungicidal properties. It is effective against tinea and dipylidium infection in dogs and cats. It possesses very less activity in Monesia expansa infection of sheep. It shows variable effects when treated for echinococcus in dogs and thysanosoma in sheep. The mechanism of action is similar to niclosamide. It inf interferes with e electron transport system and glucose absorption in worms. It is given orally in tablet or suspension form, 300 mg per kg body weight to dogs, 100 to 200 mg per kg to cats, and 500 mg per 2.5 kg body weight to sheep. The toxicity is very low since it is insufficiently available to the systemic circulation. Next is Rizorantel. Rizorantel is an anti specially for ruminants. It is highly effective against Monesia infection up to 90 to 100%. In case of sheep and cattle, it also effective against human flukes like paraempistomums in both adult and immature forms. The serum level of Rizorantel is not detectable after 48 hours of treatment. It is rapidly excreted and three days after administration, the total body residues is only 0.10%. Cattle and sheep are given 65 mg per kg as a drench. The side effect may be slight diarrhea. Next is pitionol. It is bacteriostatic, fungicidal, as well as anthelmintic. Chemically, it is 2,2-thiobis 4,6-dichlorophenol. It is white crystalline solid, having phenolic odor and insoluble in water. It is effective against tapeworm infection in dog, cat, and poultry. It also causes activity against tapeworm on and rumen flux of sheep, cattle, and goats. It is highly effective against tinea in dogs and cats, but not used in case of dipylidium. In case of poultry tapeworms, it is also very effective. Bitionol is not fairly absorbed from GI tract. Peak concentration of bitionol is obtained within two hours after treatment. Excreted through bile, and it induces purgation in host by cholinomimetic action. Dog, sheep, and cat goat are given 200 mg per kg body weight as dose, and quail are given in single dose 200 mg per kg, while chicken are given two doses of 200 mg per kg. It may produce vomition and diarrhea in dogs. Next is praziquantel. Praziquantel is an isoquinoline derivative for which the chemical structure is given in the picture. This is colorless, odorless, crystalline compound that is soluble in less amount to the water. It is highly effective against all species of mature and immature tapeworms. It is effective against tinea pisiformis, tinea hydratizana, tinea tineaformis, tinea obis, and tinea multiceps, also dipylidium canina. It is also active against mesocystoides forti, echinococca species, also effective in case of flukes like paragonemias and also effective in ru ruminant tapeworms like monesia, stelesia, ruminant flukes like eurythrema and swine flukes like fasciolopsis, basci, etc. It is good in treatment of neurocysticercosis in case of human. Praziquantel is quickly and completely absorbed when given orally and distributed all over the bo body including CNS. It is metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. Praziquantel can be administered through oral, subcutaneous, or intramuscular routes. Subcutaneous 
fruit is not preferred due to very less efficacy. In dogs, a general dose of 5 mg per kg is given, but this can be varied based on species and nature of the systems. In cats, 1 mg per kg body weight given in tinea teniformis infection. For ruminants, 10 to 15 mg per kg given for monasia infection and 50 to 70 mg per kg of single dose for fluke infection. It is a very safe drug in higher doses. It increases alkaline phosphatase, dermal eye problem, and teratogenic problems. Next, benzimidazole. They are primarily used against nematodal infections, but they also possess antisystodal activities. Mebendazole is an antisystodal that is active against tinea species, echinococcus granulosus, mesocystodes, corti, etc. Fenbendazole is active against tinea in dog, monizia in cattle, sinuras of T multiceps in sheep, tinea sezinata in cattle, and hydatid cyst in mice. Albendazole is active against cystoidis corti in dog, monizia, and thysosomoma in ruminants. Embendazole acts against Avitinella, Avitellina, Centripanteta, and monizia tapeworms in cystisar and cystisar circus in cattle. Administration through oral route in all animals. The dose for Nibendazole in case of dogs is 22 mg per kg for 5 days in tinea infection, 160 mg per kg for single treatment in case of dogs, and in case of ruminants for single dose treatment, 20 mg per kg body weight, and 50 mg per kg per day for 14 days for killing cysts of tinea ovis and tinea hydrogena. For Albendazole, Dogs are given 50 mg per kg twice daily for 2 days and 100 mg per kg for single dose. Fenbendazole is given 50 mg per kg per day for 3 days in tinea infection of dogs and in case of monetia infection in ruminants, 15 mg per kg is given. Fenbendazole is given 34 mg per kg in cystic infection in beef cattle. Now comes anti-trematodal drugs. These are antihelminthic drugs used to treat trematodes or flukes infections in host animals. The flukes are also known as flatworms. The first drug is carbon tetrachloride or CCL4. It is one of the first effective drugs for the treatment of fasciola hepatica. It was introduced in 1920s. It is obtained from chlorination of carbon disulfide or reaction of disulfide with sulfur monochloride. It is volatile, colorless liquid and it is very toxic in nature. Carbon tetrachloride is very effective for the treatment of Faciola hepatica in sheep. It is cheap antitrematodal drug, effective against adult fruits. Also effective against ascarid infections in chicken and dogs. It has activity against blood-sucking nematodes, including ankylostoma in dogs and cats, hemonchus and panostomum in cattle and sheep. Strongylus of horses are also susceptible to carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride is absorbed slowly from GI tract presence of fat and oil in stomach increases its absorption. The excretion is fairly through lungs, kidney, and liver. Sheep are given 1 to 3 ml, dogs are given 1 to 5 ml, poultry are given 1 to 5 ml as dose. It should be administered before feeding. It may cause liver damage, hyperesthesia, convulsion, followed by coma. Next, hexachloroethane. It is a simple chlorinated hydrocarbon. It is less toxic than carbon tetrachloride in cattle and used against fasciola. It is also effective against humongous and trichostrongalized exit. It has no activity against intestinal nematodes of ruminants. It is administered orally and the dose is 15 to 100 gram per kg in case of cattle, 8 to 15 gram per kg in case of sheep. Hepatotoxicity may occur as toxic signs. Hexachlorophyll. It is commercially available in the name Distorin in the market. It is an effective antihelminthic which is used in the treatment of liver flux in case of ruminants and cystodes in case of canine. It is highly effective against adult faciola hepatica and faciola gigantica in cattle and sheep. Administered orally 25 mg per kg body weight for the cattle. It has very narrow margin of safety. At high doses, excitability or depression followed by death can be seen. Next is vitriol sulfoxide. Vitriol sulfoxide is effective against liver flux. It also possesses antisystodal properties. It is highly effective in case of Faciola hepatica, Faciola gigantica, Facialoides, magma, paramphestomum, etc. It is more effective against the adult flux than immature. 
It is administered orally as feed or boluses. 60 mg per kg for cattle, sheep, and goats. Next is oxyclozenide. Oxyclozenide is marketed under the name Janil. The compound was introduced in 1966. Oxyclozenide attains highest concentration in liver, kidney, and intestines. It is excreted in the form of glucuronide into bile, which is an active metabolite. It is effective against adult flux and doesn't possess efficacy against immature flux. It has poor action against rumen flux like paramphysdemum. It is used in duck farms for elimination of flux like Notocotylus attenuatus. It is uncolor of oxidat oxidative phosphorylation and it has been found that it interference by oxyclozenide is detrimental to fasciola hepatitis. 50 mg per kg orally for cattle and sheep is given and the same dose is given in ducks by orally. The therapeutic index of oxyclozenide is fourfold and therefore it is very safe drug. Next is Niclofolan. It is a nitro substituted analog of hexachlorophyll, effective against both mature and immature flux, administered orally as a tablet. Parenteral administration in cattle can also be done. Sheep are given 6 mg per kg. Cattle are given 4 mg per kg for immature mature flux, 16 to 20 mg per kg for immature flux, 0.6 to 1 mg per kg for parenteral use, and pigs are given 3 to 5 mg per kg subcutaneously. Horses are given 0.8 mg per kg subcutaneously. Fever, tachypnea, sweating can be seen as side effects. Next is refoxanide. Refoxanide is halogenated salicylenylite, which is chemically 3 chloro 4 p chlorophenoxy 3 5 diodosalicyl anilite. It is found in crystalline powder form and marketed as bolus or suspension for clinical use. It is principally used and effective against adult fasciola hepatica and fasciola gigantica in sheep and cattle. The efficacy is low against immature flux. It is also effective in hemoncosis, panostomiasis, and nasal bots of sheep. After oral administration, refoxanide is absorbed from GI tract and concentration maximum is obtained between 24 to 48 hours in plasma. It is not metabolized in cattle and sheep. The plasma half-life has been reported to range from 5 to 10 days in sheep. The mechanism of action of refoxanide is not clear. Sheep and cattle are given 7 to 5 mg per kg body weight. It has a good margin of safety in all animals, but high doses may cause inappetence and diarrhea in cattle. Lactating animals whose milk is used for human consumption should not be given refoxanide due to residual problems. The next are some anti trematodels for immature flux. It includes diamphenetide. It is highly effective against immature fasciola hepatica. Used prophylactically against liver flux in sheep, also effective against Dicrocilium lanceolata. It is absorbed in the GI tract after oral administration and is distributed in almost all tissues. Highest concentration is found in liver and gallbladder. It acts through deacylases in liver and is metabolized to an amine. An amine causes rapid death of the flux. Sheep and goat are given 100 mg per kg orally. Temporary loss of vision and loss of wool at higher doses can be seen. Now there are drugs against paramphistomiasis. Paramphistomum infection is very common in India. Animals suffering from this shows anorexia, increased water intake, and watery fatty diarrhea. It is observed that the drugs used against liver flux and cystos in ruminants give good result in paramphistomiasis. The drugs are tetrachloroethane, niclofolin, niclosamide, resorental bitonol or bitonol sulfoxide in case of sheep and cattle. Next, there are some drugs against paragonia, paragonimiasis. Paragonimiasis is caused due to lung infection in dogs and cats by paragonimus species. The drugs used against paragonimiasis are bitonol, praziquantel, albendazole, and fenbendazole. With this, I conclude my presentation and here are the references from which I have taken the contents and the pictures. Thank you.